Welcome to this little video series on how to build your first embedded systems. In this part, we will go over design and choices that we have to do in order to actually build our system. More specifically, we will talk about the microcontroller. We want to add a button. We want to add some LEDs. Of course, there are all the passive components like capacitors and resistors. And we have to talk, of course, about a way of how to program our system. So the programming interface. Next, we also want to add some IO breakout. And as a bonus video, we will add some sensors. So in this particular case, we will add a I2C or I square C sensor. This will give us a little bit more play to uh, things to play with, especially a, a new package and how to actually deal with that particular patch package itself. So first, let's start about the microcontroller. This is one of the most important things and choices you have to do in your embedded systems, you have to choose a microcontroller and trust me, there are a lot of them out there. In our case, we make it a little bit easier because what we will use is a Texas instrument MSP 430. Now, this might seem easy, but there are still hundreds of different microcontrollers. So for example, in this particular case, the MSP430 has several different series and different iterations and versions of it. So we have the first series, second value line, four, five, six, FRAM, low voltage series, RF socks, fixed functions, and extended temperature ranges. So value line that sounds interesting so let's go and look at them and, and see what they offer because the most important choice that you have to do in a microcontroller is does a microcontroller offer the features that you want in your particular design so in our design it has to support some buttons which simple io lines can support some leds that we can blink passives are not necessary to uh, don't are not necessary to be supported by the microcontroller, but we actually need them to make the microcontroller work itself. We want to look at the programming interface because that's important um, part of it. And the IO breakout, that's more of a, how can we extend the features of our microcontroller? In addition, in this particular case, we want to make sure that the microcontroller actually supports I square C sensors. So in this particular case, the series is called the G2XX. You might have heard of the Texas Instrument launch pads, and that's actually what's inside these launch pads. It's a, a one of the value line microcontrollers. You can see the picture of the launch pad right over here, and it allows you to program these devices and makes you a very cheap um, way of how to program them because this top part up here is actually a programmer for every one of these um, devices. To get a bigger overview, we can click on the products link. And this will initialize a big list of all the different microcontrollers. And if we scroll down here, you can see there is a big choice. And remember, this is just off the value line. So you have to make a choice at some point of what microcontroller you want to choose from. So since this is your first embedded systems, we definitely want to have a lot of flash RAM, a lot of SRAM, because that's the memory and storage that you can use. So let's go to the bottom here. We can see that they start or the biggest one has up to 56k of flash and 4k of ram so that sounds like a good candidate let's scroll over to the right hand side and what we see here is the different package options that's the the size in which they are coming in so if you look at the big one down here with a 56k of flash we see that it only comes in a 40 vqfn package and a 38 TSOP package. That's fairly large packages and maybe not the best choice for your first embedded system. So let's see which one offers the, a smaller package that has less pins that we um, can work with and is easier to solder. So this one has the same package up, same, and here we go. This particular case, it has a 32 VQFN, a 20 TSOP, 28 TSOP, and a 20P DIP package itself. So. Let's go and click on this particular part and we can see it opens a new page. If we scroll down, we see the different options in this particular family. We can see the price of it and all the other features that this particular chip actually offers. So let's see, we also need to make sure it 
supports button and LEDs, so it needs to have enough I.O. lines. Let's assume we have the 20 MTSOP or PDIP package. They are very small. They only have a 20 total pins, but 20 total pins still is plenty to support a couple of buttons and a couple of LEDs. In addition to that, it has two timers. It has two different um, serial interfaces. One of them supports UART, LIN, IRDA, and SPI. And the other one actually supports I2C and SPI. So, so far, this seems to be the perfect choice. Now, let's go and look at its actual data sheet. Always important, go check the data sheet because those are um, what's actually inside the different chips. And it's important to learn how to read these data sheets. So if you start to scroll down, we can see the different lists of different parts here. And this is where things start to become very interesting because now we can look at the actual package. This is the 20 pin package. So up here, if you read it, it can it says the, the TSOP and PDIP package, 20 pin devices. These are the different pins that are pinned out. So in our case, what we want to know is does it support the I2C interface? If you scroll right over here, we see UCB0 SDA and UCB0 SCL. SDA and SCL, as you will see later on, are the actual signals that are used for I2C. In addition to that, we have plenty of I.O. lines, including timer interfaces. And we even have an additional UART interface that we can do spy or other things with. We have analog interfaces, so we can read analog sensors if you wanted to. Perfect choice for extending our device to different, um, different sensors later on. All right, so let's write this time. Microcontroller, we choose this particular microcontroller, the MSP. 430G2553 buttons. We need to know what buttons we want to use because buttons are a nice way of interfacing with your system. You can click a button and interact on that particular button click. So how do you find buttons? Well, one of the ways of doing it is you go to a website that sells parts. Like for example, DigiKey, there are many other um, websites like Mauser, Avnet, Arrow, and lots of others and you type in button. Now you get a big list of different components that you can see here. Potentiometers, and diodes, circuit protections, all kinds of different things. So what do you want to do? Well, up here it actually gives us a link to push buttons. Perfect. It's actually what we want. And this didn't work. Push button switches. There we go. All right. A big choice of different push button switches. And if you don't see this particular view of your DigiKey, that's because I installed a plugin um, that uses a different website interface for DigiKey itself. So in this case, I get the choice of different um, push buttons that we can choose from. Let's expand this. We get a huge um, selection in total. There's 165 pages of different push buttons. So let's try and select one that we actually want to use. Um, the first one we, we can say we want to buy them in bulk. That will reduce the choice a little bit. So it's 570 pages, still way too many. Um, we want a single pull, single throw. Not sure if we can actually find that. There we go. Single pull, single throw. That means uh, if you click it, they're enabled. If you let go, they're they are disabled. We can expand this view a little bit. And, and there we, we, we start to see something that we like. So next, let's see what other choices we have. We have different. Um, amperages that we can choose from, different mounting types. So let's say we want just a simple through hole package. And there we are. Lot simpler choice. Let's click on this one here. It's a yellow button. It's two pins. Let's click.
click on the data sheet very simple just has two holes seems like a good choice so let's go with this one cost a dollar and that should be DigiKey has plenty of them in stock so let's pick this part number all right LEDs same thing as before let's type in LEDs again big choice of things that we can choose from let's look into LEDs connectors crystals up to electrics sounds like the right thing um, here are different LEDs LED lighting white thermal what we want is just very simple LEDs and oftentimes at DigiKey a good indicator of going for is like the number of items that they have in each category so in this case LED color lighting discrete indicator they have 5,000 of them so let's click on this one and see what we actually get from this perfect this is exactly what we were looking for so the next thing with LEDs is we need to choose a size let's scroll here to the right we want surface mount if you want later on you can choose a through hole mount I'm, I will go for the surface mount and we want to go for the package type uh, dimensions not what I was hoping for so let's apply first this we can also apply that we want cut strip and cut tape and to make it easier let's just choose um, a manufacturer light on and there we go we only have two pages left we can now check for the size in this case we want an 0603 package and we will look at that later what that exactly means just remember that there's always the imperial metric and the metric system so an 0603 imperial is a 1608 in metric that's the dimensions. so a 1608 is a 1.6 millimeter by a 0 .0, 0 0.0 millimeter package size but oftentimes referred to as an 0603 component next we have to choose a color in this case let's just take difficult choice as you can see there is pretty much everything there let's just choose a green LED we will copy this particular number over here let's say that this is green next passives resistors and capacitors still unclear what we will actually need at the end but what I want to show you is that in passives especially with capacitors and resistors these days all that we use are surface mount components similar to this LED there are different sizes of these components so if you search for caps here on DigiKey what we can do is if you want for example ceramic capacitors we just choose one of the different um, manufacturers here is like for example Morata again we choose bulk or in this case cut tape because we don't actually want to receive them in a bag now you have the different choices of course of the different capacitance ranging from 100 microfarad to 0.1 picofarad so very tiny to very small large what's important in this particular case is though that the package has to fit your footprint that you design later on and one of the caveats here is that an 0201 component in Imperial is an 0603 metric component and you have to be very careful about that because a very typical Imperial metric that we use for our components is an 0603 which is a still reasonably comfortable size for soldering by hand which is a 1608 in metric but 
if you just type in 0603 and you order the 0201 component, that thing becomes extremely small and won't be able to be hand soldered really anymore. So make sure that the component that you get, if you say, if I say in 0603 capacitor or resistor, it's actually a 1608 in metric. Don't go and choose your component in 0603 um, metric because that will be a very, very small little device. All right, let's look at the last one, programming interface. I will actually provide that footprint and that um, interface later on, but programming a microcontroller can be very tricky. So best thing is if you go with something that you're familiar with, that you can use very quickly. And in this case, what we will use is the TI um, programming interface that's on the launch pad itself. And all it needs is really the SPWTCK and SPWTD. IO and that's the two signals that we will need to program this particular microcontroller. So just two different signals will allow us to program this and I will provide the footprint for this later on. IO breakout will also be simple and we will handle that once we start to do our um, design and the bonus I square C sensor will come later on and what we will add to this particular device is a humidity and temperature sensor from um, Silicon Labs because it will have some interesting designs that we have to do and cutouts in our PCB so I can show you different things on how to do cutouts and layouts that are not just rectangular and how to actually make a little bit more complicated devices in our system.